Good morning. I love that. What a beautiful sound that is. And we welcome you to First Baptist Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. On a Sunday where we're going to really be excited to be baptizing three young ladies into the fellowship of this church. We welcome you here today. Give your attention, though, to a special thing that will be happening next Sunday. We'll be listening to Dr. Wayne Brown as he speaks to us in view of a call to be our new interim pastor. And uh, I hope you're as excited about that possibility as I am. I'm kind of like the old tired quarterback that's just ready to throw a pass and somebody else to take it on in. It's kind of that way. But uh, I do feel that the committee has done an excellent job and it's my personal feeling that uh, God has led us to Dr. Wayne Brown, who was for many years pastor of First Baptist Church in um, Myrtle Beach, uh, South Carolina. And he's done several interims since then. And uh, he is a people person from the word go. You will see that, a very praying man, deeply spiritual. And I just sort of have the innate feeling that God has led us to this individual as our interim pastor. So be here next Sunday to hear him, and uh, I think you'll be blessed for that. Let me mention some other concerns that we have as a church. Uh, the funeral for um, Warren Cook will be next Friday at 11 o'clock here at the church. What a faithful member and what an inspiration he has been. And now we want to come together for a service to celebrate his life among us this coming Friday at 11 o'clock. And then just one other note, young people, remember that uh, you have an activity at the farm where you've been before uh, at 6 o'clock, but you're to meet at the church, I understand, at 5.30. Am I correct in that? So 5.30 here at the church, and uh, that's an exciting time too. And the big day today, though, is uh, a baptism service. What a delightful thing to have happen at the, well, as I pass the ball to somebody else, I hope, and uh, so we're just delighted to have all of you who are here today who are our regulars as well as those who are visiting in connection with the baptism service today. Again, may God bless you for being in his house of worship today. to join me in a moment of prayer. And our loving Heavenly Father, as we have gathered here today, we do rejoice in the fact that you love us and care for us, and that you walk with us as we allow you to by our faith. We thank you for all who have come this way today, and we pray, Lord, that we might receive a blessing through 
the various parts of this service today as you speak your message in various kinds of ways to us. We thank you, Lord, for the fact of your healing touch and for those who need that today, we ask that special blessing. Come now, Lord, to make your presence felt among us as we continue in this service of worship today. In the name of Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. To join me in the responsive reading taken from Psalms 119, verses 1 through 8. Happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Then shall I not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart, when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will observe your statutes, do not utterly forsake me. The offertory hymn is number 262, Word of God Across the Ages. Let us stand as we sing together. 262.
If you will, please pray with me. Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for this opportunity to be here in your house of worship, Lord. Thank you, Father, also for the military, for the first responders, for our police officers and EMTs, Lord, that go to danger to save us and to provide us help, Lord, uh, and that you will bless those individuals as well as our, their families, Lord, uh, as the family is the one there supporting them, Father. I pray, Lord, that you will bless this offering, bless the gift and the giver, Lord, and use it for the betterment of your kingdom. In your name we pray, Father. Amen. Good morning. I'm going to ask you a question. What is this I have here? It's water. It's a water bottle. That's right. What can we do with water? Drink it. That's right. What else? We can put it on flowers. We can put flowers in water or spray it on flowers. That's right. Anything else you can think of to do with water? How about this? If you've got a lot of water, you can swim. That's right, we can swim. That's right, if you have a pool. Or you can 
you can take a bath and wash in water or take a shower. That's true. So water is very powerful and important. Did you know that most of your body is made of water? So it's very important that you drink lots of water to stay healthy. But when I was thinking about water, I thought of something else. Thinking of water made me think of baptism. Today, during our worship service, there are three young people who are going to be baptized. Come stand up and come stand with me just a minute. Turn around and look up there. They, you might need to stand up so you can see it. It'll be all right. You can stand. Can you see it? Where the curtains are open? That's where they're going to get baptized. And that's where the, we call it a baptismal pool. And that's where the water is. That's right. So, look here. Uh, we're going to pretend that this is a, sorry about that, it's a baptismal pool. All right. So, the three candidates that, that have made a confession of faith, they believe in Jesus Christ, and they want to...
And thank you, Sandy and children. I couldn't help but notice one thing while she was talking about the various uses of water. The bath came last. Did you notice that? <laughs> uh, but a beautiful story there and a beautiful signifying the meaning of baptism. Would you join me now as we go to our Lord in prayer? Our loving Heavenly Father, it's good to be here today. And we're so grateful that we can witness these three young ladies being baptized today. And we pray that when we do so, that those of us who have also had that experience will be able to relive our own experience and to some degree recommit ourselves to you. We thank you, Lord, for your loving care. And we're keenly aware today of so many among us who have particular needs of your healing touch and of your loving care. We pray, Lord, for those who are facing surgical procedures and those who are taking treatments, those who are recuperating from illness experiences, those who simply have long-term illnesses that they have learned to live with. But we pray, Lord, that you will touch each one with your healing power and grant them the scope that uh, they can never go outside of your love and care. Lord, we ask your blessings today upon those who have lost loved ones in recent days. We're very keenly aware of the fact that they need a special dose of your love and care. And so we pray that you will use us to express love, but we pray, Lord, that they may feel it directly from thyself to them. We pray, Lord, for those today who are making important decisions in their lives, and we pray that you will grant them a sense of direction and grant that they may seek your will in these decisions. Lord, we do lift up our missionaries as they express the message of your love in Jesus Christ throughout many places in the world. We lift up those in our military and we pray that you will grant them the realization when they feel the sense of hostility in many cases uh, very close to them, but help them to know that there is another presence there that's even bigger than that. Lord, we do thank you now for the blessings of being in your house today. And so we ask that we might continue to feel a sense of your loving presence with us. These blessings we ask in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen.
Thank you, choir, for those beautiful sounds of praise. Our scripture lesson today is from the third chapter of the book of Galatians. I'll be reading verses 23 through 29. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Him, with Christ. There is no longer Jew nor Greek. There is no longer slave nor free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ, Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. May God bless the reading of this scripture to the understanding of our hearts and minds. Question, who are you really? Now, if I come up to you and ask you the question, Who are you? There are many answers that every one of you could give. You could think in terms of age, child, youth, adult, senior adult. Or you could think in terms of gender, boy, girl, man, woman. You could think in terms of family relationships. Who are you? Son or daughter, husband or wife, mother or father, a single mom, single dad. Or one of the biggest identities has to do with what we do most of the time. I could ask you that question and you could say, well, if you're a young person, you could say, I'm a preschooler, an elementary student, a middle school student, or a junior high student, a senior high student, a college student, a graduate student. But most of us who are adults would tend to think of the work we do. We would say, well, let's see, whatever your particular work might be, an office worker, a plant worker, a businessman, a salesman, a school teacher, a retired person, we would think in terms of what we do with our time most of the day. You see, you're identified by what you do with most of your time. But you could also be identified by what you do with your leisure time. You could say, well, I'm a golfer, a fisherman, a woodworker, a hot rod car buff, an antique car buff. Ah, now you're talking. That's kind of my thing. Now you're talking all of us need something that we enjoy doing that we don't have to do. And that, too, is a part of our identity. There are so many areas of your life in which you have an identity. Now, if I ask you the question, uh, who are you really? What would be your answer? Who are you at the very core of your being? What should it be? Well, let's just look at that passage I read in Galatians a while ago. Galatians 3.26 says, For in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Ah, there it is. If you are a Christian, a child of God, then that is your biggest and most important identity of all. Now, it should not obliterate all of these other identities that you have. But it should permeate them. It should have a way of just kind of shining through and coming out whether you want it to or not. Do you remember the television program? Some of you that are uh, sort of in my age category. Years ago about the doctor who was accused of killing a man and he was pursued relentlessly by the detective who just had an obsession with it. And of course we knew at the beginning that he was innocent. But this doctor kept going from place to place and he kind of had to stay a step or two ahead of this, uh, this pursuing uh, detective. 
And do you remember that he was always doing something for people because that was who he was. He was a physician, a doctor, and it would just kind of sort of seep out who he was even though he was trying to hide his identity. Now folks, that's... Oh, and I need to tell you that it ended up right so that he didn't get caught and put in jail, but uh, that thing finally ended right, I remember, uh, a number of years ago. But you see... He had this identity and he really couldn't hide it even though he wanted to. That's the way it's supposed to be with all of God's people. That identity should have a way of just kind of leaking out, seeping through, In it should permeate our very beings, our lives, and our lifestyles. This identity of Christian is the one that you really are, if indeed you're a child of God. And my friends, all of those other identities will one day pass away, but this one lasts forever. When you have died, it matters not so much whether you were young or old, male or female, what kind of work you did. The thing that matters then is, are you a child of God? Are you a Christian? Now, a fragmented person is one who does not know who he is, but you see, if you're truly a Christian, a Christian knows that he is God's child, and that is his main identity. Now, today, those who are to be baptized are confessing to you and professing to you that their biggest identity now is that of a Christ follower, of Christian. They have taken on a new identity, saying to all, I am a Christian. God has forgiven me. I'm a follower of Christ. He loves me and I love Him. And I want everybody to know it. Did you notice that in the Scripture when Jesus would heal a person, He would say, tell no one. They would usually go out and tell people though. But then when He asked them to follow Him, and they did, what did Jesus tell them to do? Tell everybody what God has done for you. And that's what these three that we're going to be baptizing today are saying. They're saying it loudly and clearly. They've already said it as they came in answer to the invitation uh, some time ago. But now they're saying it in even bigger and a louder style. And folks, we Baptists do it in such a way that when you have been baptized, that's an experience that we go to a bit of trouble for. But you don't forget it very easily, do you? And I hope today, as we see these three being baptized, that you will relive your own experience of baptism, if indeed you have acknowledged Christ in that way. And that you will sort of recommit your life to Him as you see these today giving this beautiful expression of their commitment today. As you see them going under the water, it pictures so beautifully the death to the old life, rising to walk in newness of life. And it also pictures, as we have been told already, the cleansing that takes place as we express our faith in God and accept His divine forgiveness and His divine love. And here's the way the Apostle Paul expressed it. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. My friends, if indeed you are a Christian, that is truly your biggest identity. May it permeate your very life so that you don't have to wear a sign saying, I am a Christian. And so as we see these today, may you be able to kind of relive your own experience of baptism. May God bless you all for being here today. Join me in a moment of prayer. Our loving Lord, we do thank you for these who have come today. We lift them up to you and those who are to be baptized. And we pray, Lord, that they may be able to grow deeper as the years pass in their love for you and in their spiritual depth and understanding. We thank you for their lives and for what they shall be. And Lord, we pray that if there are others who need to make such decisions, that you will work in their hearts, that they too might find that sense of joy in finding you and expressing to the whole world you as Lord and Savior of their lives. These blessings we ask in the name of Christ our Lord.
Amen. Our hymn of invitation is number 362. And as we, sting, we, as we stand and sing, we ask that those who feel that God is calling them to acknowledge Christ will come. That you, if you're thinking about joining this church, this is the time to do that by transfer of letter or, as, or by statement of your Christian experience. And always we like to give the invitation for those who just simply need to publicly reaffirm their faith in the Lord to recommit your life, to rededicate your life. As we stand and sing, as God speaks to you, come. Would you stand as we sing? 276. Now would you please be seated and just enjoy the music until we're ready for the actual baptism service. As we prepare for baptism, let us sing together hymn number 362, Baptized in Water. You will recognize the tune very quickly.
Now would you join me in a moment of prayer? Again, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your care. We thank you for that love that reaches out to touches us and that draws us near to you. And we thank you, Lord, for the response that these three young ladies have made to you in faith, acknowledging you this day as their Lord and Savior. Continue, Lord, to bless them in their walk with thee, and we lift them up to you just now. In the name of Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Maggie Williamson, do you acknowledge Christ as your Lord and Savior? Upon your profession of faith in Christ as your Lord and Savior, and as an expression of your commitment to Him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Mary Greg Williamson, do you acknowledge Christ as your Lord and Savior? Upon your profession of faith in Christ as your Lord and Savior, and as an expression of your commitment to Him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Upon your profession of faith in Christ as your Lord and Savior, and as an expression of your commitment to Him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand. Now, our Father, as we have seen these three baptized, we pray that we might, those of us who have had this experience, relive our own experience of baptism and recommit our lives to you. We pray, Father, now that you will grant us a sense of your peace as we go. In the name of Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. 